Hi, I'm Karen Nyberg, a NASA astronaut and crew member of the International Space Station. The Space Station is an amazing laboratory where we are conducting valuable research to benefit life on Earth. Our work has led to advancements in telemedicine, helping people in remote locations, helping develop important vaccines, and much, much more. As the mother of a preschooler, it means a lot to me to know that our work in space is helping all of us on Earth. For more information about the benefits of our space research, visit www.nasa.gov. Hi, everybody. NASA's Josh Byerly here inside Mission Control. I'm joined by my friend Nicole Stott. We're going to be talking about, you know, the Sunday is Mother's Day, and with Karen Nyberg, the uh, PSA that you just saw here on NASA television, of course, is a mom. So we want to talk about moms in space. So why not talk to a mom who has been in space. How are you doing, Nicole? I'm great, thanks. Yeah, so let's talk about it. You know, it's, there are moms and dads, obviously. There's lots of astronauts I and mean, cosmonauts have, have children and, and families. So how different is it to, you know, commit yourself to going up in space for five or six months and, and to kind of prepare your family for that? It's a little bit different than just taking, you know, a road trip, right? Yeah, it is. It's quite a bit different, but I think there's some common things like, you know, even if you were taking a road trip or planning a vacation uh, that was going to be fun, you're going to be engaging your family in that in some way. And yeah. I think, and I see Karen doing this now too in preparation for her flight, is you want to make sure that your family is involved with that that adventure that you're about to have, that experience you're about to have. And that's everything from the time that you're in training and exposing them to the different kind of training events that you participate in, the different countries that you're visiting and, and meeting those people, knowing your crewmates yeah. um, so that they understand who you're going to be spending your time with and where you're going to be, coming over, visiting mock-ups, and, and just generally, I think, making them a real part of the whole experience. How do you keep in touch with them? I mean, it's a little bit different than it used to be. You've got you know, phones and email and internet and things like that. So does it make it easier? It so. does, I think. And and I think that's something that you can get used to on the ground. Y you know, we, we travel quite a bit uh, training and preparation. Yeah. And so you already have to be kind of creative with the way you can communicate with your family. And that's, you know, everything from Skype and to just email and phone calls and stuff. But, you know, the, the station has a really beautiful setup for communicating with the ground. And just like we do with the control center here, we can speak to our families on a regular basis every day, multiple times if we wanted with the, the satellite phone essentially that we have and through email like you mentioned and then while I was up there and I don't know now maybe it's even more frequent we had once a week video conferences mm -hmm. with our family and, and other folks if we, we wanted to as well. So I think we're really fortunate uh, with the way the communication system is and, and I think about family members that are on deployments, military deployments, and they have so much more of a limited way to communicate with their, yeah. their friends and family. And uh, I think we're honestly pretty blessed to have what we do with station now. So you flew up to the station back in 2009 as part of Expedition 20 and 21. Then mm -hmm. you did 133 back in 2011. So yeah. your, your son was seven back in 2009. Now he's 10. Was he mystified by it, or is it just sort of, oh yeah, mom's an astronaut? You know, it, I mean, I mean, they got to get used to it at, some, at, a, at a certain point, right? Yeah, I, th I think they do. I think it's like it, any job a parent has. You yeah. know, sometimes your kid is going to really think it's great, and other times it's going to be like, you know, I could care less what you're doing. <laughs> you, you just need to go buy me then that new Yu-Gi-Oh card or whatever, whatever it is. And uh, but I, I, I was. I had a really good time. Our, our family is, I think, into the space thing. Uh, my son was, uh, I think, uh, excited about it. And like we said, just being able to engage them, you know, getting over here and getting to see the mock-ups and yeah. watch some of the, the egress training that we do and out at the MBL and the big suits and stuff. You know, it's like... It's like a kid getting to see the toys that their their parents get to spend some time with, and then helping them understand what you're going to be, you know, using that stuff yeah. for. And I've given a number of presentations to my son's schools and others where he's come along with me, and I think that he could do. I probably, actually, I know he could do a better job uh, getting up there and making that presentation and speaking very, very knowledgeably about yeah. what goes on in the space program and the fact that as long as he's been alive, there's been this space station up there with people living and working continuously. So whenever you're up there and you're, and you're talking to him, like, how, how do you be mom? Like, how do, how do you, you know, <laughs> check up on the schoolwork and make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and, and have those kind of conversations? Yeah, you know, it's... Um, you have to accept the fact that you're remote and you're not going to have that same, you know, that same level of hands-on kind of uh, input that you can down here. But 
Uh, I think it, it, it's kind of neat. You just get a little bit more creative. You know, you use your phone calls in a way that I think you don't always want to be focusing on, you know, getting the homework yeah. done. It needs to be kind of a bigger conversation that you have with them if they want. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, he might want to be going out and riding his bike when that phone call comes. So, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Sorry, but you can't come to the phone. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> sorry, I, you know, I'm in the pool right now. But, um, but yeah, it's... It's good because I think it, it forces you to be creative. And but you can you can have those same kind of conversations you do here on the ground with them uh, over the phone. And and the fact that I have also uh, you know just a really supportive uh, husband who I know is he was engaged and and working all that uh, while I'm not there. You know makes it even even better and more comfortable as you know as a person who who is then in kind of a detached or. Yeah you know, not nearby kind of uh, position. Had he grown quite a bit by the time you got back? After he had, and he was in the midst of losing, you know, those front teeth and yeah. everything. I got back from my first flight, and, you know, there was one still dangling. He was making sure it didn't <laughs> come out until uh, I got home, so I got to witness that. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So as Karen gets ready to launch, I mean, you know, you spent, what was it, five, I guess five months almost up there? Yeah, a little over three. A little over three, that's right, because it was back yeah. in 09. So is it, does there come a time where, you know, time sort of, stand still does it get easier after the first few weeks or does it speed up you know time kind of warps a little bit whenever you're up there so yeah you know the time actually uh, went by fairly quickly for yeah. me I don't know if my husband and son would say the yeah. same thing with the perspective from down here but um, it goes by pretty quickly and I think it, it you know it kind of stays the same you know throughout I don't feel like it ever got easier to be away mm -hmm. from my family that way I think yeah. that's the one thing that is just always there you know, is yeah. that they're not going to be there yeah. with you. And so I think y you have to kind of go in, uh, maybe accepting it is kind of a strong, you know, way to say it, but just knowing that's the way it's going to yeah. be throughout. And I remember after the three months when, uh, you know, my ride, STS-129, got there to bring me home, I remember thinking before they got there, I'm like, wow, you know, I could, I could stay up here another three months. This is a beautiful place to live and work. We're doing some really cool stuff. But on the other hand, I was happy that my ride got there on time. Mm -hmm for mine and my family's sake to know that per the plan I was going to be coming home like yeah. like was planned instead of it just kind of dragging it's out. It's like not having a delayed flight you yeah. know, at the airport. So. Yeah. So whenever you take a look at uh, you know being up there being away from your family and things like that and the amount of time that you spend up there like how do you whenever you come back to earth how do you I guess readjust and also how do you how do you talk to your your kids about you know what, what you just did like how do you how do you how yeah. do you articulate that with them? Well, you know, I think that's what goes back to, again, the the keeping them tied in throughout the entire experience, yeah. I think, is really important. So it's not, a, you know, a huge surprise to them what you've been doing or the kind of experience it was. I think what you try to do is, in the kind of the most exciting way maybe possible, explain to them the things you can't um, you know, you can't show in a picture or, you know, write down or, you know, yeah. really talk to them about, but, you know, kind of that physical feel of being in space or that that view out the window and, you know, the kind of impression that can have on you and, yeah. you know, maybe try to take it a little bit further and uh, explain to them why getting to see something like that is important and why what we're doing up there is, is so important as well. And, you know, hopefully they can carry that on and, you know, share it with other folks, too. Or maybe go up there one day. I, that would be awesome. Thanks for stopping yeah. by. It's always good to talk to you, Nicole. Yeah, you too, Josh. Thanks. If you would like to learn more about Karen and uh, Fyodor and the rest of the crew and Luca, you can log on to the NASA website at nasa.gov slash station. The, these uh, guys are getting ready to launch at the end of the month. They're down there uh, undergoing final preparations, and their mission is going to kick off here very shortly. Thanks again.